Good morning, everybody. On the last term, we have discussed about the ozone, and I told you that in the next lecture we will continue about this topic, which is known as ozone. As already in the introduction, I have said that ozone is very important for the existence of life on this earth because without ozone. the harmful ultraviolet light would reach the earth surface and would cause major effect chemically ozone the formula is o3 as explained to you and it is produced from oxygen itself in the presence of ultraviolet light we live here on the earth and when we go above the earth about 20 to 40 km above the earth surface there is a region in the atmosphere which is known as the stratosphere here the concentration of ozone is maximum we know that from sunlight we get uv visible and infrared radiation the earth receives visible light and infrared light whereas we do not need any ultraviolet light therefore it is absorbed by the ozone present in the stratosphere the maximum concentration of ozone is present in this layer of the atmosphere which is known as stratosphere it extends about 20 to 40 kilometers above the earth's surface now let us see some of the chemical reactions from which ozone is formed as i have already spoken it is produced from oxygen 3o2 in the presence of ultraviolet light it will give two molecules of ozone sometime the molecular oxygen is also dissociated into atomic oxygen here in the second reaction you very well see that o2 in the presence of ultraviolet light is breaking into atomic oxygen o plus o sometime this molecular oxygen will combine with the atomic oxygen and will convert into ozone all these three reactions take place in the presence of ultraviolet light only then sometime the ozone is also dissociated to oxygen by uv radiation or by the reaction o3 ozone sometime react with atomic oxygen to convert into the molecular oxygen therefore all these three four reactions results in the steady concentration of ozone in the stratosphere but we human beings we are having lot of industries on this earth because we want to compete with the rest of the world therefore we are doing industrialization we are cutting the trees but we are not saving the environment so you see that ozone as i have said that it is very important for the existence of life on the earth because most of the harmful uv radiation which are coming from the sun it is absorbed by the ozone present in the stratosphere had there been no ozone had there been no ozone in the stratosphere then you can very well see some of the damage which are there on the screen first one it is said to be it will cause skin cancer majority majority of the skin cancer is caused due to harmful radiation that is the uv light which is coming from the sun we see that damage on the plant life is also there that we have the gradual destruction of the life on the earth sometime this uv radiation also affects the eyes and some of the persons they suffer from cataract of the eyes or we can say that some eyes problem or the eyes injuries also reported due to this harmful uv radiations which are reaching the earth you must have heard a term which is known as ozone hole this ozone hole we are already aware of this in the newspaper in the magazines in the journals in the television we are hearing that a big hole has been there about the antarctica region which is known as ozone hole from which the uh, ultraviolet light is reaching the earth basically ozone hole means that there the concentration of the ozone 
is decreasing or it is gradually thinning it means that there the ozone is converted into oxygen and oxygen does not have any capability of absorbing the ultraviolet light which is coming from the sun therefore what are the major factors which are responsible for the depletion of ozone layer on the last one uh, i have spoken that we are using freons freons which are known as chlorofluorocarbons and they are used as refrigerant they are used as in the cooling industry and we are using in the air conditioner devices also therefore freon gas is primarily responsible for depletion of the ozone layer when there was when when this freon gas was discovered or it was it came into then some of the properties they were very good for this gas because this gas was inert on the earth it was not that reactive it has a better cooling property and had it has industrial revolution industrial use also but as time passes then scientists and researchers came to know that this freon gas which we are using on the earth for cooling purpose for refrigeration industry in air conditioner in various other uh, uh, applications it is releasing nascent chlorine and when this nascent chlorine uh, reaches to the stratospheric height then it damage the ozone layer and it has been estimated that majority of the damage in the ozone layer has been due to freon gas we will see the chemical reaction later on but the second but the second cause it is known as the supersonic aircraft because these aircraft they fly at a great height at a height of stratosphere means that they fly at a height of about uh, 20 to 40 kilometers above the earth surface basically how these aircraft are causing major damage to the ozone layer we we'll see basically we have seen that the us has stopped flying these aircraft because of the reason that you can see the estimate a fleet of 500 trans atlantic concord flying will reduce the ozone layer by 5% thereby increasing the uv radiation to the earth by 10% that is these aircraft they breathe air and give oxides of nitrogen to the atmosphere at the stratospheric height where the maximum concentration of ozone is present therefore the us and various other countries they have stopped flying this supersonic aircraft because along with freons they are also responsible for damage in the ozone layer let us see the chemical reaction also as i have spoken as i have told you that they breathe air and they give oxides of nitrogen no which is released by burning of the fuel from the aircraft it will react with chlorine monoxide the formula is clo dot this is the reaction will be it will produce another free radical which is known as chlorine free radical and this nitric oxide will be converted to no2 the other reaction is that this cl this chlorine free radical may also react with the ozone present and it will result in the formation of chlorine monoxide free radical and with the liberation of oxygen here we see that this chlorine atomic chlorine will react with the molecule uh, this uh, a molecule of ozone and it will form chlorine monoxide along with oxygen if you see the net reaction the net reaction shows that clo dot on the left hand side and clo dot means chlorine monoxide free radical on the left hand side and chlorine monoxide free radical on the right hand side they will cancel with each other this chlorine atomic uh, this chlorine free radical this will cancel with this chlorine free radical and the net reaction will be no plus o3 on the product side it will form no2 plus o2 it means that the ozone which is present in the stratosphere is converted into oxygen and thereby depletion of the ozone layer take place if there is thinning in the ozone layer 
or the gradual depletion of the ozone layer, I have already told that the concentration of UV radiation on the earth increases and thereby causing major damage and one such damage is the skin cancer, a cataract of the eyes, climatic changes, uh, entire uh, environment uh, is affected due to this UV radiation because the earth does not, uh, uh, does not have any use of this UV radiation. Next comes to the chemical reactions of the freons. I have already spoken about that, that freons are known as chlorofluorocarbons. They are used as propellants. They are used as solvents in aerosol sprays. They are used as fluids in refrigerators and air conditioning equipments. They are basically inert, but if they migrate to the stratospheric height, then they damage the ozone layer. Let us see the chemical reaction that how freon, freon causes uh, damage to the ozone layer. Here you see that this, this is a freon molecule Cl2F2 in the presence of ultraviolet light it will give chlorine free radical along with ClF2. This chlorine free radical if it reaches to the stratosphere where the concentration of the ozone is maximum then what you see is that it will react with O3 and it will produce chlorine monoxide free radical with the uh, supersonic aircraft chemical reactions also we have seen that when they breathe air and they give oxides of nitrogen then they form chlorine monoxide free radical and this chlorine monoxide free radical here also is produced due to chemical reaction of chlorine free radical with ozone one more reaction taking place ozone in the formation of the ozone I have said that ozone in the presence of ultraviolet light uh, is also dissociated into molecular oxygen and atomic oxygen here you see that this atomic oxygen which is produced it will react with chlorine monoxide and it will another it will form another chlorine free radical it means that from one chlorine free radical several other chlorine free radical due to subsequent reactions and basically you see that this atomic oxygen will react with chlorine monoxide free radical to form again chlorine free radical with the liberation of oxygen or formation of oxygen and this chlorine free radical it uh, react with ozone which is there in the stratosphere and it will form chlorine monoxide if you see the overall reaction of the net reaction the chlorine free radical on the left hand side will cancel with the chlorine free radical on the right hand side similarly the chlorine monoxide on the left hand side will cancel with the chlorine monoxide on the right hand side and if you see the overall reaction then what you find is that ozone react with uh, atomic oxygen to form oxygen it means that it forms molecular oxygen it means that there are two major sources first one was the supersonic aircraft the other one is the freons which is used on this earth as in the refrigeration industry in the cooling industry and the, as a gas in the refrigerators in the air conditioning equipment then we have seen that this damage the ozone layer another source of depletion of ozone layer is nuclear test which results in the uh, release of nitric oxides and several other oxides and similar chemical reactions goes at the stratospheric height if this NO is released in the environment if it reaches to the stratosphere then it will cause uh, major damage aerosol scans yes of course aerosol scans have been discontinued in USA and it is estimated that aerosol used till 1973 has reduced the ozone layer by 10 to 15 percent you can imagine that we are using these uh, things in our daily life but they cause major damage to the environment and basically to the ozone layer next is the consequences of ozone depletion there are several consequences skin cancer is the major then we have swelling of the skin then we have the cataract of the eyes leukemia problem also then we have cancer burning sensation on the skin and we have lungs cancer and lungs injury problem due to this uh, ozone due to this ultraviolet light which is reaching the earth surface uh, depletion of the ozone layer has been observed in the arctic region where a big hole has been uh, reported which is known as ozone hole this i have uh, told you just now 
Now the need for the substitute, since we know that uh, we cannot stop the cooling industry, we cannot stop the refrigeration industry, we, we cannot stop. Therefore, what we need is that to replace this chlorofluorocarbon with some other alternative which has zero ozone depletion potential and which has all the properties or better properties than the chlorofluorocarbon. Therefore, <coughs> scientists and researchers, they have they have uh, invented or discovered some other uh, compounds which has better cooling property. These are environmental friendly and they do not cause much threat to the ozone layer. These compounds are HCFC. Now, what do we mean by HCFC? This is known as hydrochlorofluorocarbons and HFC, which is another term known as hydrofluorocarbons. They are used as substitute for CFC and in the refrigeration and air conditioning units. One most common HCFC is hydrochlorofluorocarbons. 22 has been used as refrigerant for several decades. HCFC has zero ozone, zero ozone depletion potential. Therefore, uh, this was all about the ozone. I have spoken about this uh, importance of the ozone. What are the major factors which are responsible for the depletion of the ozone layer? Then we have studied about the chemical reactions which are taking for the formation and the depletion of ozone in the stratosphere. We have also seen some of the chemical reactions which results in the depletion of ozone layer by freons which are known as chlorofluorocarbons. Similarly, we have seen that uh, uh, supersonic aircraft has been, uh, US has stopped flying this supersonic aircraft because these aircraft when they fly at a great height, at a height of stratosphere, then they deplete the ozone layer. Another cause was atomic explosion and aerosol scans have also been discontinued and there were several consequences of this depletion of the ozone layer because if this ozone layer is getting thinner or depleted than maximum concentration of the UV light is reaching the earth's surface which is causing major threat to the environment.